unbox and set up the HP Reverb G2, HP's VR headset. Hi, and welcome to HP How To For You, HP's customer support vlog. I'm Steph, and over on that side is Bill, and we're here to bring you tips, tricks, and how to information to help you get the most out of your HP products. Today, we're going to unbox and set up the HP Reverb G2, HP's VR headset. Let's get to it. Packaging is great, easy access to everything, and molded cardboard to reduce the use of plastics. HP is dedicated to creating a more sustainable future. First, we have the headset and the Oculink to USB Type-C and DisplayPort cable. Next, we have the controllers and the batteries, along with the power brick and power cable. And finally, two adapters, USB Type-C to USB Type-A adapter and DisplayPort to Mini DisplayPort adapter. In case you need the serial number of your headset, it is located under the face mask on the left side. Now, let's go over system requirements and specifications. Basic system requirements include the following. Please ensure you have the latest Windows 10 update, May 2019 or later, loaded onto your system as significant improvements have been made to Windows Mixed Reality. Your operating system needs to be Windows 10 version 1903 or 1909 or 2004 or later. In fact, always be sure to keep your operating system software and firmware up to date. For processors, i5 or i7, 8th generation or better, the Intel Xeon E3 1240v5 equivalent or better, or the AMD Ryzen 5 1400 or better at least 8GB of RAM, DisplayPort 1.3, USB 3.0, and a graphics card that supports DirectX 12. At the time of this video, the current crop of mid to high-end graphics cards should work. However, some of those may only support half resolution. Keep in mind that as newer cards are released, you'll need to check their capabilities to ensure they will work with the HP Reverb G2 headset. Check the Quick Specs document on hp.com for more detailed and updated specifications. We put a link in our description below for your convenience. Before you get to play with your new toy, Bill, you have to check a few things on your PC. Select Start, select Settings, select Update and Security, select Windows Update, and then install any updates. Updates may vary based on your own personal setup. After the updates run and your PC restarts, select Start, then select Mixed Reality Portal. Click Start Setup and check your PC. Microsoft Mixed Reality includes a system check of your computer to ensure it has the system resources to use the hardware. Click on I Agree to agree and continue. The system check should come back with Good to Go. If it doesn't, identify the areas that don't meet the specifications and you can take appropriate actions, such as freeing up enough disk space or updating your graphics driver. Click Next. Now comes the fun part, connecting your headset. I'll let Bill take that one. The first and most important step is connecting the headset to the Oculink to USB Type-C and DisplayPort cable. To fully seat the cable to the headset, You'll need to remove the face mask from the headset, insert the cable connector dot side up into the slot along the top edge of the headset. Insert the cable at the top of the headset, push until you hear a click. You'll want to make sure that the dot on the cable is aligned with the edge of the headset, indicating that it is fully seated. Put the face mask back into the headset. Make sure that the cable runs on top of the headset frame and through the cable loop on the back of the headset. Allow enough slack to put the headset in the up position when needed. See how the cable is able to move as I lift the headset? Now, let's get it connected to the PC. There are two connectors at the end a full-size display port, and a USB Type-C. Both are required to run the headset. 
If you're using a desktop, plug the DisplayPort cable into the DisplayPort on your video card at the back of your PC and the USB-C into an available USB-C port on your PC or preferably on the back. If you have a USB-C port on your video card or on the front of your PC, it may not support the right functionality required for the headset, which is why we suggest plugging it into the back. If you don't have a full-size display port, you can use the display port to mini display port adapter. And if you don't have a USB-C port, you can use the USB-C to USB-A adapter, like we're showing on this notebook. An important note here is that the headset requires DisplayPort 1.3 or later. You can't use a DisplayPort to HDMI adapter. So if you don't have a DisplayPort on your graphics card, it will not work, as demonstrated on this notebook. Now for the final step. The headset requires power. Plug in the included AC adapter into the junction box. The VR headset will not function if it is not plugged in. Now, let's put this headset on. To put it on, the headband should be rotated up. Hold the headset to the eyes with one hand, then pull the headband down with the other. Do the reverse to take it off. This is important because if the displays are not aligned with your eyes, the image may be blurry. Sliding the headset on and off could result in the displays being misaligned to your eyes. Once the headset is on, you'll want to adjust it using the hook and loop fasteners. There's one on top and one on each side. Loosen and tighten for that perfect fit. The back of the headset frame should be positioned to cradle the occipital lobe. Wearing it there will improve your field of view. In Windows Mixed Reality, click Next twice. The app will search for the controllers. The controllers are paired out of the box. If they show Paired Not Connected, turn the controllers on by pressing and holding the Windows button on the controller for three seconds. If the controllers do not connect, you can manually pair by clicking Manual Pairing on the app. If the controllers are paired not connected, you'll need to select Unpair Controller before you attempt to pair. Then follow the on-screen instructions. The pairing button is located in the battery compartment. And while you have that open, make sure the AA batteries being used supply a full 1.5 volts. Click Next on this screen to get to know your controllers, which lays it out a lot better than what I had in the 80s with my first gaming console. Then click Exit to launch Windows Mixed Reality Setup. If you have limited space, you can use the Reverb G2 while seated. But for a full VR experience, you'll want to use the headset while standing and setting up boundaries in your room. To do this, follow the on-screen instructions. Once your space is set, put the headset on and enjoy the Windows Mixed Reality Portal. What you're seeing on screen now is what Bill is seeing in his VR headset. The Reverb G2 was created in partnership with both Microsoft and Valve. Launching applications can be done in the Microsoft Mixed Reality Portal or through Steam VR. Please note that the Microsoft Mixed Reality Portal is required to run any VR application, and if you want to access games through Steam, both need to be open in order to play or work. And when you're done using the Reverb G2, you can power the headset down by unplugging the power from the junction box. And that's a wrap. You can find more videos just like this one on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash HP support. You can also find us on Twitter and Facebook at our support channels and on our HP support community at community.hp.com on the gaming accessories board. You can find us and other people just like you answering questions about your products. Bye. Bye. Click the Playlists tab to find your language. Find official HP support videos.